All right, you guys, we're here back again. Uh, Mr. Medellin, sometimes they call me Mr. M. And today we're gonna to be covering additive and destructive pathologies and how it results in different uh, levels of recorded IR exposure. So first, we'll get started with additive pathologies. So additive pathologies. So we know that pathologies are diseases, correct? So additive pathologies is where you either have more density, more tissue density to the object, more density such as tissue, or you can have water, all right? So pathologies that include water such as edema, uh, or if it's pus, um, something that's you're adding fluid uh, to the tissue. So if you increase the density of the object or you have more water in the body, well obviously the x-rays that are interacting with the tissue are gonna be attenuated more, correct? So when you have more density or more tissue density and more water, water you're gonna have more attenuation. So again, attenuation is what? Attenuation is the absorption of energy with the loss of intensity, correct? So attenuation is gonna occur. Now, if you know your interactions with matter, what interaction of matter is responsible for attenuation? Do you guys remember? It's gonna be photoelectric. Correct? So a lot of times I tell my students to know the term photoelectric absorption because all your energy is being absorbed back into the tissue, correct? So you're gonna have more photoelectric absorption, you're gonna have more attenuation, and what, what is that gonna do for the, for the x-rays going through the object? It's gonna reduce it, right? So you're gonna have less, less x-rays reaching the receptor. So reaching the receptor, all right? So I'm doing my best to, to uh, make sure my writing is legible. I've been known to get a little sloppy as I continue, but I just get excited about it and write too fast. So you're gonna have less x-rays reaching the receptor. So that means you're gonna have less IR exposure. All right, so to compensate for this, what do we have to do? Well, if you're having less x-rays reach the exposure, you're gonna have to go up your technique, correct? So you're gonna, it's gonna require more mass or more KV. All right, so more mass or KV. And we're just gonna use the word technique. All right, so you're gonna have to go up in technique. So if you use more technique, it's usually about uh, two to four KV that we go up in. Uh, if you wanna use more mass, it has to be more uh, mass, about 25, 30% to see a, a considerable change in the recorded exposure. All right, so, <clears throat> Additive pathologies, more density or more water, there's more attenuation, more photoelectric absorption, less x-rays reaching the receptor, less IR exposure, require more mass. So this is where you as a, as a rat tech have to know your pathologies. We have to know them. Um, there's a book uh, that we use, the Principles of Imaging, radiographic book. There's a, there's a nice chart on the side. I actually have it right here. So I have the book here. This is the Principles of Radiographic Imaging. I do prefer this book to study for when you're studying for the ART exam. But on page 219, I have it to this page here, you'll find a summary of all the pathologies. So let's think about some common additive pathologies. The list is huge, you guys, the list is huge. And in class with my students, I give them a handout. And we have a list of what's additive and what's destructive. Uh, but for today, let's focus on some key additive pathologies. One of them is pulmonary edema, okay? So pulmonary edema. So edema is a, is a fluid or water retention, right? Pulmonary pertains to the lungs. So this is lung, right? Lung and water. So this is where you have an increase of fluid in the interstitium of the tissue of the lung itself. So pulmonary edema is different from a large pleural effusion. So sometimes we get this mixed up and I try to instill in the students that are studying this that a, a pleural effusion is a water collection as well, but it's occurring where? In the pleural cavity. So this is the space between the, the linings of the, of, the, of the cavity itself, the rest of the cavity. We have the visceral and then we have the parietal. So in between those two, we have the pleural cavity. So a pleural effusion is a water collection within the pleural cavity whereas pulmonary edema is gonna be a, a fluid retention within the lung tissue itself. So that's the difference, but they're both additive pathologies. Now, if somebody has pulmonary edema, the lungs are filling up with water. 
So what's circulating all the water in the body? It's gonna be the heart, correct? So then the heart is trying to pump harder. It's, 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 it's a muscle and it's getting buff, but it's not a good buffness, right? But it's getting big and all of a sudden we end up with a heart that's enlarged. And that pathology is called cardiomegaly. So cardiomegaly, if you guys have seen the radiologist measure the chest x-ray, they'll do this thing, right? And they're looking to see the size of the heart. Well, if the heart is a muscle and it's taking up more of the thoracic region, then you're gonna have to increase your technical factors to go through the thickness of the heart. Now, if somebody has pulmonary edema, cardiomegaly, well, they probably have a backup of water fluid in the lungs and in the tissues itself of the body. They're probably gonna have another pathology, guys, known as congestive heart failure. So if somebody has congestive heart failure, their lungs are filling up with fluid, the body is, is struggling to circulate the fluid, and they're starting to retain water throughout the whole entire body, correct? So, we got here pulmonary edema, cardiomegaly, and congestive heart failure. So all of this pertains to the lungs. The other one I included, you guys, was pleural effusion, and it, it's usually a large pleural effusion. If somebody has a smaller one, it's not really gonna make that much of a difference. If they have a lot of uh, water in the pleural cavity, then yes. If somebody has an infection of that pleural cavity and there's pus, and then patients have their chest tubes sticking out, right? So they have the chest tubes to allow the, the pus to come out of the thoracic cavity. That's gonna be known as empyema. So if somebody has pus, the x-rays have to go through the pus as well, correct? So these are just happening with the chest and you can have additive pathologies throughout the entire body. If it's a skeletal system additive pathology, there's something called Paget's disease. All right, so. I have a friend and they pronounce it Paget, that's probably the, the correct term, but I always say Paget's disease, but Paget's disease is where you have a uh, atypical bone where it's, it starts to become soft. And what is the body's response to? It starts to send more bone material around the bone. And before you know it, you have this over accumulation of bone material. So now you've made a, a thicker bone. So obviously you have to increase your technique, right? There's another one that's the opposite of osteoporosis and it's osteopetrosis. All right, I'm very big on medical terminology. Osteo pertains to bone. Petra, I want to go to a place called Petra in the city of Jordan. I would love to go there one day, but it, it's where a city that's carved in stone. And that's what Petra stands for. Petra means stone or hardened. And then you guys know osis is abnormal condition of. So you have an abnormal condition of hardened bone. So obviously you're going to have to go up in technique. So these are just some examples of the additive pathologies and this is telling us exactly why we have to go up in technique. So the next one I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go into destructive. So I'll take a step back, I'll let you take a snapshot of that if you want to, and then we'll go ahead and continue with destructive pathology. So destructive pathology, I've also heard of it described as subtractive. So I'm gonna put that on the board as well, subtractive pathology. So destructive pathology is where you have a loss of tissue density. So you have a loss of tissue density of the object, or you're gonna have more air, okay? So more air or gas inside the body. And what do we know about air or gas? It's very radiolucent. So radiolucent is gonna go through, radio is x-ray, lucent is gonna go through it, correct? The other additive was radiopaque. All right, so I should have used those terms. We know what those terms are, correct? So if you have a loss of tissue density, you're gonna have, or more air, you're gonna have to decrease your technical factors, correct? But let's go back a little bit. Let's understand the why. So if you have a loss of tissue density, right, you're gonna have less photoelectric absorption, and you're gonna have more x-rays going through the object, correct? So it's going to become, and I'm writing this term on the board, it's going to be radiolucent. So it's going to be more radiolucent, so it's going to go through. So what does that do for IR exposure? What's going to happen? You're going to have more IR exposure, correct? So you're going to have more IR exposure because you have more x-rays that are penetrating the part. So if you have more IR exposure, you're going to maybe possibly overexpose the image. So in order to compensate, it's gonna require a decrease in technique. 
So you're gonna have to go down in your technical factors. Okay, I, I tell my students, you know, with, without sounding offensive, but I stereotype my patients, I do. I know we're not supposed to, but I do, not in a negative way, but if I see a patient coming in, they're hunched over, they're using a walker, they smell like cigarette, and they got an O2 tank, right away I'm thinking I gotta go down to my technical factors. Why? Because them being all hunched over, they probably have osteoporosis, they smell like cigarette, and they got an O2 tank, so guess what? They probably have COPD or emphysema, so I'm gonna have to go down in my technical factors. That's what I mean by I stereotype the patients. So I'm already thinking in my head, what are the adjustments I have to make in technique? So it requires a decrease in technique. So let's think about some of the destructive pathologies. Right now, I just said, if a patient has osteoporosis, this is the opposite of osteopetrosis. So be careful when you're looking at the test question and you're looking at the options. Sometimes they just see osteo and they see an osis. You have to make sure that you're selecting osteoporosis, where you have an abnormal condition of the bone becoming porous. There's a lack of tissue density, right? So osteoporosis is one. Did you guys hear me? I said the patient probably has emphysema or COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, right? So these are both going to be radiolucent pathologies. Emphysema is where you have this hyperinflammation, uh, inflation, uh, of hyperinflation of the lungs. The alveoli are 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 lar enlarged irregularly. They're dilated and they don't go back down. And the air, the lungs, you know, they got air in the lungs. They don't know when they're going to get air again. So they stay hyperinflated. So this is why a patient with emphysema is going to have a flattened diaphragm. They usually become barrel-chested, broader, and their area of the lung tissue looks darker because it's going to be more air inside the lung, so it becomes more radiolucent. Same thing with COPD. So we got osteoporosis, emphysema, COPD. Let me just take a look at this list here, you guys. All right, so for decreased here, oh, we got pneumothorax is on here as well. And it's usually a large pneumothorax. So what exactly is a pneumothorax? Well, that's free air that escapes out of the lung tissue and it goes into the cavity, into the pleural cavity again. So if there's a large pneumothorax, which is an overaccumulation of free air in the thoracic cavity, then it becomes very radiolucent and the extras are gonna go right through that. So again, I would decrease the KV by two to four KV. The textbooks say three to four KV or you can go down 25 to 30% mass for these destructive pathologies. So there's a whole list, again, of pathologies. I would encourage you to, to take a look at the list. Uh, if anybody has any questions, they can reach out to me as well in regards to pathologies. Maybe we'll just do a, a video on just going over all the different pathologies as we continue. But I just want to give you a quick breakdown of what's additive and what's destructive pathology, okay? So I'm hoping that helps you guys. Um, again, you know, we'll be doing more of these videos and making sure they all correlate with each other, okay? Thank you.